Welcome to the Travel Gluten-Free Podcast, where you can listen in on how to lead a gluten-free lifestyle with more fun and ease. Travel Gluten-Free is like having a best friend by your side to give you the most up-to-date gluten-free traveler information. Let Travel Gluten-Free be your number one source for tips, tricks, and advice you can use to safely navigate your next gluten-free travel adventure. Enjoy food, enjoy travel, and enjoy life. And now, here's your show host, Illiquity. Hey friends, it's Illiquity, and we're back for another season, another episode in season nine of the Travel Gluten-Free Podcast. I'm so excited to, jo- to join you for season nine. It's been five years now that I've been doing this podcast, which is incredible, and I love podcasting, and I'm so glad I got to do this to give you this awesome information and to get into the podcasting world because it's been such a fun experience for me. I have an amazing show today with one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite gluten-free travel products ever on the face of the earth. Before we jump into the show today, I just wanted to ask you if you could go over to, I have a new website. It's the same address, www.travelglutenfreepodcast.com, and I just gave it makeover. So definitely go to my website, and I have an, an ebook on there. It's 10 Tips for Traveling Gluten-Free. So you can download your free ebook today by just going over to www.travelglutenfreepodcast.com, and then you'll see the little link for download your free ebook. Just click on that, put your information in there, and you'll instantly get the ebook. 10 tips for traveling gluten-free. So get your free ebook today. So let's jump into the show. So my guest today is a food allergy educator and he also has multiple food allergies. So he's not celiac, but he understands how it is to try to go out and eat like a quote unquote normal person. He has performed at more than 1000 school assemblies. He founded his company Equal Eats after a lifetime of struggles dining out at restaurants. Don't we know how that feels at home and at abroad? And This is a little fun fact about my guest today. He loves puppets. So without further ado today, I want to introduce my guest, Kyle from Equal Eats Dining Carts. Kyle, welcome to the Travel Gluten Free Podcast. Hey, Liquidy. Thanks for having me. So, so happy to be here today. Thank you. I'm so excited we finally got to do this because you're, I'm not lying when I say it and not because you're on my feature episode today, but you are literally one of my favorite, favorite gluten-free tools that I use when I travel. And the reason why is that I'm just going to say this right off the bat. So I sort of speak, like I speak, I call it gringo Spanish. So I, I get it. I have enough to get by and to compliment people and to say greetings. As we know, when you're going out to eat, people who speak Spanish natively speak it so much faster. It's very hard to understand them and to respond appropriately. And when you're eating and you want to be safe, that is a huge gap. And so what I loved about your Equal Eats dining carts when I traveled with them last November and I went to Spain and Portugal, it was amazing to just be able to take out that card or take out the PDF that I printed up, hand it to somebody, and I knew they understood exactly what I needed because it was in their native language. And we're going to talk about why your cards are superior to the other cards that are out there. But before we jump into that part, let us know, like, what is your background on allergies and what type of food allergies do you have? How do you deal with them on like a daily basis when you go out to eat? Yeah, so I've had my uh, my multiple food allergies all my life. I was uh, an 80s baby with uh, a whole laundry list of life-threatening food allergies to peanuts, tree nuts, egg, fish, shellfish, and mustard. Egg is probably the toughest one for me. It just gets into so many things. It kind of eliminates dessert altogether, <laughs> being allergic to egg. When I got older, I met a wife who has celiac disease. I've lived the celiac life vicariously through her. She's lived the food allergy life vicariously through me. So our setup in our kitchen is something else, you know, in terms of the the color coded cutting boards, the separate toasters, separate, like we just, we get it. We have each other's back. And when we go dining together, we're that couple that has the, the script, the scroll of questions that we, that we go through. But uh, for me, it's been a long haul. I've had some, I've had some close calls with my allergies. I've used my epinephrine a few times. Learned a lot of lessons along the way, but at the end of the day, it's self-advocacy. It's being confident with yourself, with the condition that you have, 
and not letting it define you, not letting it limit you and uh, what you want to achieve in life. Great point. And that's literally the whole reason why I do this podcast is because yes, having celiac disease and food allergies is tough. Yes, you have to prepare more. Yes, you have to do more work, but it doesn't mean that it should affect your lifestyle to the point of where you have to change your lifestyle to live the way you want. And so I totally agree with that. So you grew up with them. So you've lived with them your whole entire life. What was the biggest challenge for you when you started eating out as restaurants as an adult by yourself. But by that time, were you pretty acclimated to it? Because I didn't have celiac disease until eight years ago and I was well into my adulthood. That's that that's tough when when you get that type of late diagnosis. It was the same for my wife as well. And it's it's a learning curve. I think you know the toughest part for me was growing is it was more this the times that I grew up in and that allergy awareness, celiac awareness was so low and that the biggest challenge for my parents was just getting other people to believe it was real. Getting a waiter, a waitress, just to understand that this is a real thing and it's serious. Because we had so many eye rolls, because we had so many people that still gave me food that I was allergic to after I requested safe food, it, it made it tough. And I think as I got into those years where social I mean, meant so much of hanging out with friends and not wanting to stand out, I didn't want to stand out. So I did take a lot of risks when I was a teenager. And I think as I got older, I kind of just became conditioned in a way to not want, not wanting to feel like a burden, just trying to just fit in, not rock the boat, not being a great healthy eater because I just went with those really super safe options because I just didn't want to have the conversations because I knew I had terrible experiences where I just didn't want to have that deal with ignorance every single time when I dined out, especially with friends. Yeah, it led to a lot of risk taking and I didn't get I didn't get smart. I didn't wake up to how it should be in terms of self advocacy until I had the biggie reaction that really rocked my world. And I think I needed that wake up call. I needed to have a reaction that scared me silly to to realize that I never want that to ever happen again. I never want to have my throat close at a restaurant and inject my EpiPen and call 911 and have an ambulance and paramedics come in. That's that's not ideal uh, on a date. So that at age 21 changed the trajectory, not only of my life, but just how I treated my, my health. And I never again wanted to feel like this victim of my condition that uh, didn't want to be a burden to others. I'm pretty outspoken about it now. I walk into a restaurant and I feel like we have power in numbers in our community. I'm not the only one. You're not the only one. They're dealing with us a lot. And where I am right now, it's it's the law that they must disclose in Europe what's in the food that they're serving me. We've come a long way. There's still a long way to go. But I feel like for everybody, whether you're diagnosed last year or 20 years ago, it's a journey. And it's, you can't just learn these skills overnight. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that's why so many people get frustrated when they find out they have celiac disease is they think they can't eat anything. And there are actually a lot of really great options now. Like I owned a health food store 25 years ago and there were hardly any options for people who are gluten-free. It was, it was really, really hard to come by anything that was good. Do you mind telling us about what was the scenario that you ended up getting the allergic reaction. And, and like, honestly, I think we talked about this before in, in conversation over Zoom, but I feel like having celiac disease is, is definitely easier than having a full-blown food allergy because I, I actually do have some food, food allergies too. I just found out a month ago, I have like nine food allergies, but none of them are like, I don't get anaphylactic shock reaction from them, but I do, I'm trying to like figure out which ones are worse than others right now. We're having celiac disease. When we get gluten, like we feel like we're going to die, but I know I'm not going to die. Like, I know I'm just going to feel absolutely horrible for like three weeks. What was the scenario that led, you said that you were risk taking and that's really common with teenagers in general, but what was like, what ha happened? What was the, like the, the storm that happened, the perfect storm that happened that ended up you having to inject yourself with your epi yeah i've got multiple stories <laughs> i can start with the first one to, to take it back a step that comparison of allergy and celiac disease for me it's it's something where even though one's life's threatening and one does a lot of damage they're both very serious and i and i don't i don't really like to compare too much because i see my wife when she gets gluten and i know the risks with infertility and all of the other things that come along with celiac disease and it's just, it's just as serious to me. One's immediate, one's long-term potentially. So 
fully fully take both on the same level for me. I just carry epinephrine everywhere I go, which is a pain in the neck. But you got to do what you got to do. Um, my first reaction, right? Right. My first reaction, though, that was the really big one was actually it wasn't at a restaurant. I had a few at restaurants later on. It was at my my grandmother's house. And it's those situations where you let your guard down. And I know that's true also with celiac disease, where you're with relatives, you're at that function that you're just like, okay, they should get this. They should know, right? There was- (laughs) They don't. They don't understand at all. Of course they don't. Only You got to trust yourself. You got to trust your gut. And when grandma says, yeah, I I made these squares and I'm sure they're okay for you, you got to still second guess your grandma, right? Ask the questions. Still have to be vigilant. And it's not because you don't love grandma. It's just because you want to make sure that the process, she, because a lot of people don't understand it's the, all, it's, all, it's the process as well as the ingredients. Exactly. And, you know, wonderful lady. And it's just tough. I have a lot of allergies. That's a lot to remember. That's, that's why I put them in writing on a card. <laughs> there was a slip up. I, I ate a, a square and I take full blame. I didn't ask the questions and it had cashew in it. And my throat closed within about two minutes of eating it. It was Christmas Day. My whole family was was with me. And it went from just joyous occasion to panic, real scary. Uh, my, my blood pressure dropped incredibly quickly, became faint, almost lost consciousness. My mom saved my life with, I'm embarrassed to say, but an expired EpiPen that we found in the glove compartment of our car on a fr- freezing winter day. So I'm a really lucky in that scenario. And that's why it was such a wake up call. I got scolded by the doctors in the ER department. They heard about it all. And they're just like, shame on you. You're lucky. I say, how old were you when that happened? I was 21. So just coming out of my teen years. So that was your wake up call. That was the wake up call that set me set, set me straight. Since then, I've had I've had some other reactions, but it was by no means an error that big on my part. There was a couple of restaurant experiences where I did all I could do. I explained and it was still, there was some barriers there and I got served a dish that just wasn't safe. You learn a lot of lessons along the road. Uh, There's places I don't go into anymore and there's different cuisine that I know is my sweet spot. (laughs) For people who don't know, an anaphylactic reaction is a life-threatening reaction where you cannot breathe. And I've, I've actually had that reaction to antibiotics, to Zithromax, where all of a sudden I stopped breathing. Yeah, that was scary. It's scary when you stop breathing because it's it's basically like someone sticking a bunch of cotton in your lungs and you literally, no matter how hard you gasp, you can't get any air. And it's it's almost like being underwater, but there's no water around you. It's super scary. Yeah. And so an anaphylactic shock reaction is just like instant. But immunologists told me years ago was that even if you have a slight allergic reaction to something, if you keep eating or keep exposing yourself to that allergen, you can end up having an anaphylactic shock reaction in the future. And it'll just like, boom, hit you. And you won't even know it's that you won't even know it's coming until it hits you. Yeah, there's a lot of allergists saying out there that there's no such thing as a mild food allergy, they all have potential to be very serious. So uh, I treat all of mine with the same level of severity. I've had those reactions and we we see allergic reactions, anaphylaxis portrayed in movies uh, with big swollen lips and, and, you know, this, but there's, there's so many different systems. It's a systemic reaction. And one of the scariest things of all for me, it's, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but one, one symptom of anaphylaxis is an impending sense of doom. And this is something that is very fascinating because it's not something you see, but it's something you feel. And that alone, that was the feeling that scared me from ever wanting to experience again. It's like seeing asteroids coming down to Earth and like we're, we're all go- goners. It's that feeling of it's we're done. And, and that in your, the pit of your stomach is just horrendous. So uh, very scary for anybody that goes through that. That's why I'm on a mission to just really help our community, the free from community, avoid reactions altogether. Yeah, I, actually, I know that feeling as I've had that several times after I had a concussion and I had anxiety from the concussion. It was like I was literally scared to leave my house because I thought I was going to die. It was it's very scary and it's very debilitating, that feeling. Yeah. And the other thing for people to remember, if you're listening to this and you see somebody have an allergic reaction, even if they get an EpiPen, you still need to go to the hospital because you can have a secondary reaction that closes up your throat even after you take the epinephrine. And there's all sorts of things. So even if you are witnessing somebody who is having an allergic reaction, they get an EpiPen, make sure that that person gets to the hospital, even if they have an EpiPen, because that's really important. Kyle, let's jump into your cart. Clearly you have a really bad reaction. You have severe allergic reactions to food. 
what was it that made you decide to go from like making your own cards to like making this mass distributing so like you can help everyone who has different types of like food intolerances and uh, food allergies? Yeah, and I, and I think that was pretty logical. You, there's a lot of people out there making their own cards, which is great. We all communicate our dietary restrictions differently. It's not a black and white thing. So I did start making my own. My wife and I we went backpacking across Europe into Morocco and, and really realized the need to, to put it in writing. I can't speak Arabic. I can't get this across, all of these allergies there. So that started the idea. Great question in terms of what made me get into a more bigger market, trying to help more people with it. I did see some companies doing, doing this and it just didn't feel like we nailed it yet. It didn't feel like we have a solution that, I don't think there'll ever be a solution that's perfect for 100% of the people ever, um, but there wasn't something that could hit 80% of the people. Some are pages and pages of, of documentation of what to do, um, which is great, but at the same point, I really wanted to make something professional, something that fits on, on a credit card, something that would be taken seriously that has that tangible feel plastic heavy weighted not just a, a piece of paper invested in professional printers credit card printers and brought a team together where essentially wanted to make sure that not only the product was solid but the process and that to me was number one where i knew people just trying to start companies using Google Translate and just taking translations wherever they could get them from. And I can tell you, I've, I've done deep dives into the world of online translators and they are not accurate 100% of the time, especially with some, even words like peanut, they can get awfully wrong. Our process is huge. In terms of just laying out a card, every single element to me was important of why it's there. We had a team of celiac experts, food allergy experts, dietitians, allergists, you name it. We had consultations. We've had a survey with over 2000 people to just get feedback, and feedback and more feedback. And then when it came down to translations, this was something that I really wanted to put a process in place. And that process is essentially professional translator that we hire. We then hire a professional proofreader. And just to keep the expenses rolling on it, uh, we then hire a, a native speaker to review. And that is the most important step to me of just getting someone who talks the talk, a local, to really make sure these professionals are speaking the speak that a 16-year-old waitress would understand in a certain country. It's a heavy process. There's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes for me is what I personally would use to keep myself alive and safe traveling. And I feel like our community deserves that product too. That's awesome. So we're going to take a really quick break right here, my friends. When we come back, we're going to talk about more of why my, I'm going to talk about my experience with Kyle's Eagle Eat cards, a little more detail and why Kyle's process and his product is so much higher quality and so much safer to travel with than any of the other stuff you can find out there. All right. So hang tight, my friends. We'll be right back. gluten-free friends, it's liquidy. We know that traveling gluten-free can be hard, but you know what? It doesn't have to be impossible. You can still travel and be independent, have fun, and be in control of your life. Travel the way you want to, even with celiac disease. I know because I travel extensively several months out of the year with celiac disease. If you want to get started on learning more about how to travel gluten-free, grab my free ebook, 10 tips for traveling gluten-free. In my ebook, you're gonna find the basics of traveling gluten-free, from the questions you need to ask when dining out to air travel and cruise travel advice. You're gonna find my top tips that I've learned for my expertise. Get your free ebook today by visiting my newly revamped website, www.travelglutenfreepodcast.com. Go to the bottom of the welcome page where you're going to see the beautiful Caribbean boat picture. Click there and sign up today. Receive your free ebook, which is going to be dropped directly into your inbox. Remember, go to www.travelglutenfreepodcast.com, go to the bottom of the welcome page and get your free ebook and find out my top tips for traveling safely when you're gluten free.
All right, my friends, we are back with Kyle Dine, Dean Dene from Equal Eats, and um, we're going to talk about the quality of Kyle's product. So when I traveled, I used Kyle's products a, f- a few months ago, last November, and it was uh, I was on a cruise, and I was on a two-week cruise, and uh, we visited Spain, France, and Portugal. And I sort of, I speak Spanish pretty well, but it was so, let me tell you, it was so easy to just hand somebody the card and then they read it and then you, they, you can see the look on their face. Like you can tell, like they definitely take it more seriously when you hand them a card. And not only can I put my celiac disease on there, I can also put my gluten intolerances and other things on there as well, which is super helpful. One of the things that I really loved about Kyle's cards, and I actually did a product review, which is also going to be on the, my YouTube channel. So definitely go to Travel Gluten Free Podcast, and I show you how to set up and order an Equal Eeks dining card on my product review. You can not only say that you have celiac disease, but you can personalize it for al- food allergies, gluten intolerances, like anything, any type of food intolerance or allergy you have, you can add it to the card which is super amazing because I can tell people, like I don't have to explain people about corn or avocado or anything else I can't eat. I can just hand them the card. And the other thing that I love about it too is that not only do you have the plastic cards, I also got the PDF paper version. So I printed up a few copies of those and handed it to my servers on the cruise. And so they took that back to the chef. And so the chef just had that with him for the two weeks. So every time they made my order, they knew exactly what I could and couldn't eat. And they had all the prep things which they were probably familiar with. But it was so nice not to have to explain that every time I sat down to eat at the cruise or every time I went out to eat. I mean, although I did tell them if they spoke pretty good English, what it was I needed and then handed them the card. So it's super helpful. And let me tell you, Google Translate does not work well. There's an actual channel out there that they have where they take Google Translate and translate it back and forth from English to another language. And let me tell you, it's really funny because it makes no sense at all. You don't want that when your life is on the line or you're on vacation and you're trying to enjoy yourself and you have all this stuff happening. Kyle, what, what your process, which I really love, which we talked about before when we chatted, it's really great because it's not just getting a translator, but you have multiple levels of that. And so what was it that made you decide to do multiple levels of translation for your cards, like multiple backup to make sure that it was correct. I went back to school. (laughs) I went back to school in 2018 and I did a master's degree in entrepreneurship and innovation management. And it really just flipped my thinking overall about, think about these high profile entrepreneurs out there. You can name a few right off, off the cuff. They really preached about the importance of just being humble about not being a know-it-all, not not getting into business for just Lamborghinis and, and, and money, but to really solve problems. And if you want to solve a problem, especially a big problem, you can't do it alone. And that was just driven into me. And I really took that to heart. And the more that they pushed us to talk, talk to people, get perspectives, the more I realized if I'm going to build this company, it's got to be a community lift because we do have so many ways of communicating. So when I did survey 2000 people and do telephone interviews with 60 people, I was just digging for what are my blind spots here? What are we missing? And just listening to the concerns of our community, it just came up again and again. It's got to be consistent. It has to be accurate. It has to be professional. It has to be plastic. And the more I listened, the more I got addicted to feedback. That's what led to a process that I knew would appease the people that um, are in our community, the people that I talk to. So it's it's a circle now that I absolutely love to, to create products that people appreciate because this is what they ask for and to do the process that they ask for and to create a process out of, out of nothing. And, and that to me is very fulfilling and uh, I refine it all the time. I always, I'm a process guy now, but I feel like that's what our community deserves is not just like, this is Kyle's stamp of approval, but no, there's a process here that we follow rigorously 
to ensure that we're safe. I love it because one of the differences I found when I traveled with your cards, the biggest difference was the level of safety I felt when I was traveling. And I'm like a really well experienced traveler. Like I've been to 17 countries and multiple, you know, been in countries with multiple languages. I haven't been to Asia. I will, I will say that. So I haven't been to like the Asian countries, but like normally when I try to explain something to somebody or I get used to Google translate previous to using your cards, people kind of look at it and you can see the expression on Like you can tell when someone doesn't understand something, right? Cause they have that expression on their face. Yeah. Whereas now when I travel and I hand somebody an equal eats cards, they're like, oh yeah, I totally, like you could see that they understand. And that look on their face is just, it's like, it just makes you calm down. Like your food anxiety goes way lower. Like, you know, they're understanding what you can and can't eat. And then they'll point and say, yes, yes, yes. And then they'll tell you like which ones you can eat based on what you've just handed in the card. So it really cuts out a lot of the food insecurity and food anxiety when you use equal eats cards. Cause I know, like, I know these people are understanding what I'm telling them when I hand them my card. So that is just like, thank you for doing that. That makes my like planning and travel so much easier and so much more enjoyable when I have your cards with me. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. But I, I think it's, it's just so important to make, get back to clear communication. And for someone just to, to remember my, all of my allergies, that's impressive. I don't expect it. There's six things to, to list there. And for, for someone with celiac disease, for them to just know what is celiac disease and know what exactly needs to be avoided. That's why like, we, we designed the cards to have a bulleted list of, you know, there's wheat flour, soy sauce, baked goods, other products to at least get them thinking of what this actually means in terms of creating a safe meal. As you said, we have these cards where you can combine uh, dietary restrictions. So here's one, what is the Spanish in, for celiac disease and lactose intolerance? These are two big heavy things on their own, right? And to just put them simply and clearly in writing on a card can really make a difference in just clear communication. They can bring this to the chef, they can get a better grasp of it versus writing on their notepad or trying to remember all of this. It's just a lot to ask, especially with language barriers. So it just helps. Yeah, I actually recently used one of your cards because I was at a Mexican restaurant that was on Find Me Gluten Free. Yeah. He was, they were saying on Find Me Gluten Free, like the reviews, what you can and can't eat, but my server didn't speak good English. So even though I was in America, I pulled out my Spanish card, my Latin America Spanish card and gave it to him. And I was like, oh, give this to the cook. And he did and he's like, oh yes, you can eat the huevos ranchero. So it was really nice that even though I was in America, yeah. I didn't have a Spanish speaking server. So I always carry them with me everywhere I go no matter even if i'm in america because you never know when your server doesn't speak english and those are usually the best restaurants to eat at because they're like awesome ethnic food but then again you've got the language barrier yeah yeah absolutely it's one of the reasons we actually got there's there's so many variations of language so we have spanish for spain we have spanish for latin america to use closer to home we have uh, three three variations of chinese so and portuguese for brazil and portugal so it's really important to to really speak their language and make sure they understand. And how many languages do you now offer? Because I was really impressed with the number of languages because I thought like you were just going to offer the basic 12. 50. <laughs> so I, I thought at the time... And so what are the more some of the more unusual unusual languages you offer? Well, unfortunately right now, Ukrainian and Russian don't sell uh, quite quite much. Um, but some of these, Nor these Baltic countries like Latvian um, and Lithuanian or, or and Estonian, these, these are countries I would love to go to. We don't sell too many of these, but it's surprising. We got Swahili last year added and they're very popular. A lot of people going to Kenya, Tanzania, but yeah, some of the smaller European countries where, where I am right now, Slovenia, Slovenian is not as popular it should be it's a beautiful country <laughs> our, our top languages are ones that you could easily name italian greek french spanish german it's the the regular spots that people are going to which which is great to see that people are back traveling to these places again well i'm glad you have swahili on your list because i just got interviewed on a podcast yesterday from one of my friends who's from tanzania and so we were planning on going together next year and so i am going to definitely hit you up for a swahili card next year for, for oh. equal eats one other thing i would love for you to talk about kyle is what i absolutely loved another like cherry on top of your icing kind of ice cream sunday kind of deal is that not only do you have the like what you can and can't eat based on allergies and tolerances and autoimmune but like you also have a spot on the card that says like can you please change your gloves in the process can so can you talk a little bit about that and what you put on the card as well 
Yeah, we we have a cross contact or cross contamination statement on every single card. So essentially, it says caution, and it's this little gray box here. Please use clean gloves, utensils, surfaces, cookware, and frying oil when preparing my meal. Thank you. It's not taking away from the overall message of I have celiac disease. I cannot eat gluten. Here's some more information. Here's a trigger of what this can actually be in a call to action at the bottom, but it's also just providing them a little bit more clarity on that. This is serious. This is not something that you can just use the same cutting board, um, use, use the same grill. So it, it triggers a little bit more in terms of asking them to be professional about it. And this is on our celiac cards our food allergy cards. We have a couple variations of the wording. We don't always include frying oil for uh, intolerance cards, but for ones like celiac, food allergy, absolutely. We're, um, we're really trying to spell out to them how careful they need to be. Yeah, well, this has been so great. And if you're listening to this, definitely, definitely, definitely go over to Equal Eats. You can see I've got the link at the bottom um, and that's my link for you guys to get the cards. Uh, definitely get a set of Equal Eats cards so no matter where you're traveling because they have been another tool that I use in my toolbox to eating safely when I'm out. And I have never gotten gluten to eating Equal Eats cards. I can tell you that right now. So. I, I, have one more thing to, I have one more thing to say though that's really, really exciting. So we have our cards and this is always kind of stage one of, of helping people. But our app is about to be released. And this is super cool. Cool. Uh, let me try to get it focused in on here. But our app is essentially going to allow you to toggle through whatever your restriction is, celiac disease and other across all the languages. So cards are going to be great. But this is just a supplement too, in case you don't have your card on you. You can always have it on your phone as well. So trying to help out in different ways. That's amazing. I carry my cards with me everywhere, no matter what. Like I always have my celiac disease card like in my purse that I carry everywhere. And then I have all of mine in my travel purse that I carry when I travel. But that's even that's an awesome another additional yeah. tool to have in your traveling toolbox for sure. All right. So at the end of every interview, Kyle, I always ask people travel plans and recommendations. So what is a city, region or place you would highly recommend to a gluten free traveler? Ooh, Italy. Um, we, we were in Florence last year and my wife was just treated. She loved it. We found it was so easy to find gluten free pizza and pasta and um, it, it was a dream for her. It wasn't so great for me with, with my nut allergies. It was difficult. Um, but I just like was just applauding her the whole time. Like, yeah, you get to eat all of these delicious things. And so she really enjoyed Italy. We found Florence, that whole rolling hill area, just beautiful, amazing wine, amazing food for her. I had a lot of salads, so <laughs> I was I was fine, but uh, it was more just to see that area. So that that was great, and yeah, for for me, I, I just love traveling. I don't put a lot of focus on food, so base my travel on food. I base it on uh, the fact that I will be okay. I'll prepare. I'll plan. I'll bring my own food. I went to China for three weeks and didn't eat out once. I just cooked on a hot plate that I bought from Chinese Walmart and made rice and soup all of this on the floor of my hotel room. And uh, it was not glamorous, but I got to see a beautiful country and I got to experience a culture that was wonderful. People ask what about the food? I'm like, I don't know. I, I really didn't experience the food, but I, I was safe. So I say the world is, is totally doable. Travel, with celiac and allergies, all doable. Not doesn't need to, to limit you. I think it's tough wrapping our head around, especially if you're diagnosed later, you know, what travel used to be for you versus what travel is now. But I think if you have it for a long time, you get used to it. It starts to detach itself from travel. Travel becomes more and about culture and about geography and so much more than just food. And I think that's a healthy perspective that keeps you in love with travel without being disappointed when you go to a beautiful place like Florence and realize you can just eat salads. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So based on that, what's your favorite just geographic place to travel to? Like what's the best experience you've had traveling that you really love, like the culture and like the experience and, and everything about that travel vacation? Yeah. You, you might laugh, but uh, USA. Um, I'm, I'm from Canada. 
so for me, going to the U.S. is a big deal. I'm a tourist, and I've driven the the Pacific Coast Highway a few times now, right from um, Portland or, or C- yeah, Highway One, <laughs> Seattle, all the way down to San Diego, and that is a special trip that just means the world to me. And I love the different parts of it. I love the redwood forest. I love going through Eureka. I love all like the Bigfoot stuff <laughs> along the way, and then you hit. Uh, Big Sur and Monterey, and it's just, it's a special trip that I, I've been around the world. I've been to a ton of countries, but U.S. is so special to me. I'm sure a lot of your listeners will ha- like hearing that, but it's really true. It's just, it's my home away from home, and I love to visit. Yeah, the Pacific Coast Highway is just amazing, and I actually did the whole thing from co- the complete end of Southern California, like right at the border of Mexico, all the way to Olympic National Forest, uh, all like eight years ago. And when I first found out, I was gluten free, and um, it, it's spectacular. Like you see, the Big Sur looks like somebody painted it on the freaking. Like I remember going around that corner and be like, "Where am I?" And I found out it was in Big Sur. So I'm actually going back to Pacific Coast Highway this summer with my best friend, and we're gonna do like. Uh, half of California into Oregon. And so that's going to be exciting because she's never been. All right. So my next question is, is that, oh, hold on one second. What is your next trip you're taking or thinking about taking? My, my next trip is actually the U.S. <laughs> uh, I'm going on tour in May. So I'm going around <laughs> to educating kids about food allergies, celiac disease at about 30 schools across uh, the Northeast. But internationally, who my wife just threw something at me today that um, we might be going to Brazil for a conference that she's been invited to. Ooh, so I've amazing. never been to South America. So I've, today I'm just like, I'm into the flights and all that excitement of like, is it possible? I haven't looked into the food situation yet, but I believe it, it is, you know, as I said, anything's possible. The thought of going to Rio is pretty cool. Oh yeah, no, Brazil is on my hit list. Bra- I can tell you this. I had a really good friend years ago that is a native of Brazil and Brazilians know how to party. Like I've been to the New York, the New York City Brazilian Street Festival, which is like literally eight blocks long and everybody's drunk and everybody's dancing. So (laughs) if you can't have fun in Brazil, you can't have fun anywhere. I can tell you that right now. For Gluten Free Food, you'll have a blast there. Gluten Free Food questions. What is the food you miss most and why? And if you don't have a food you miss, that's perfectly fine. Uh, In terms of like things I can't eat now that I could could eat? Not being able to eat, yeah. Oh, um, Caesar salad. For me, it's, it's, I'm allergic to egg. So it's that dressing. It just smells fantastic. Dressing. Oh my goodness. It smells so good. I, st- I just have balsamic vinegar and oil on my salad. So, but uh, I know for my, it's, for my wife, it's pizza and, uh, and a lot of Balkan food. She's from Slovenia. So burek and a, a lot of different um, uh, cultural food here. She can't eat. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they put like breadcrumbs on like everything or they put wheat in different things to like sauces and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So what is the best? Well, my question says, what is the best gluten-free food you've eaten, but you're not celiac, but what is the best, what is the best food you've eaten recently? And why did you like it? Ooh. Uh, and it can be anything. It can be from a restaurant. It can be something you made. It can be something from the grocery store. Yeah. So it's, it is this, what I actually just mentioned, this uh, Balkan traditional food called burek. And it's spelled B-U-R-E-K. Search it up on Google. Take a look. It is fantastic. And essentially, it's like this phyllo flaky pastry with meat inside. It's a meat pie, and it comes as a big triangle slice. They, they cook it as a big round pie. And it's unbelievable. Not healthy at all, but um, I found a few places where I know it's it's safe, it's egg free for me, um, and you can get either meat in it, cheese, uh, yeah, pizza ones, potato, and it's like street food in in uh, Slovenia, in Croatia, in Serbia, uh, in Bosnia. So really, really delicious. There's some places that you might be able to find it in North America, but this is my one find lately that just blows my mind how the world is not eating balkan food and it's just the traditional ethnic food we know yeah i know that i actually know the food you're talking about because greeks make like phyllo pastry dessert uh i can't think of baklava and so it's kind of similar to that but it's a savory instead of yeah Yeah. anything with phyllo dough on it i absolutely love so yeah it's really hard to for me to find gluten-free phyllo because a lot of them have cornstarch in it and cornstarch really inflames my joints so until i can get over that definitely but yeah no that's a good one i that was that would be totally something i would pick okay so last question if a magic genie could grant you a wish to eat three quote unquote regular food items on your birthday, 
which food items would you choose? So I know one would be Caesar salad. Yep. <laughs> Let's put Caesar salad. All right. And you get two more. So I got to do a couple unhealthy things now, I guess. <laughs> oh. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> you know, peanut butter. Just there's something about it. I, it would blow my mind. It would scare me to pieces. Just like psychologically getting over putting peanut butter in my mouth, but I'm so curious about what's the big deal <laughs> about peanut butter. I've never tried it or Nutella, uh, you know, one or the other. And after that, I think overall, just so many desserts that I miss out on, um, just like a big, delicious, like even a, muffins that have egg in them or cake, big fluffy velvet cake. I would say this, this would be fantastic because I just, I stare at those cakes all the time and just like, maybe one day there'll be a cure. <laughs> I did that in Europe when I went to Europe last time. I was just yeah. like sitting there like, like my face glued to the window. And my husband's like, you can't eat that. I'm like, I know, I'm just <laughs> looking. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. So are you able, now that vegan is a big thing, are, are there more desserts you can eat because vegan is more popular and vegan doesn't have eggs or milk in it? Yes. These places and labeling can be a little bit troublesome just from the nuts perspective uh, as another source of right. protein. So when I've gone to vegan restaurants, it's actually I've had some tough times with with them. But at the end of the day, it is a starting point that they're they're aware of dietary restrictions. They're open to having those conversations with diners. And I like that. So, um, yeah, I've had some success with vegan um, products, but I still have to be really vigilant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, Kyle, this has been so amazing. I know my listeners and people out there watching this video are going to get a lot of really great value out of this. Um, where can people find you? Tell us where. Um, I know I have my link at the bottom of the video if you're watching the video part of it of equaleats.com with the link to get the uh, cards. But if people just want to find you on the web, Instagram, where where can people find you and follow you? Yeah, Equal Eats all the way. So um, our website, equaleats.com, Instagram, at Equal Eats. Um, we're, we're everywhere. So please connect with us. Uh, if we don't have a card that uh, is right for you, we we love to hear about it. I love to hear what languages we don't have that, that people need. So reach out. We're always, we, we rely on feedback. So um, we're all over the place. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, Kyle, the bell is tolling. <laughs> so our time is up, but this has been so amazing having you on the podcast. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure. I, I just want to thank your audience for, for listening. And, um, you know, I know this is a celiac audience and to hear a guy talk about food allergies and understand our, that side of the world a little bit. I just appreciate the empathy, the understanding. So it's been, uh, it's been a privilege. Thank you. Travel Gluten Free Podcast is a production of Travel Gluten Free LLC. Looking for a great way to connect with over 2,000 consumers per month? Contact Aliquity for information on sponsorship levels to boost your business. Subscribe today so you won't miss a single episode of Travel Gluten Free. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. 